For nearly all my videos, I have been using the SD 1.5 models to obtain the best results and animations with AnimateStiff. However, I was curious about how to use SD Excel models alongside AnimateStiff to achieve greater outcomes, details, and resolutions. To begin, there are two guides on how to use Excel models with AnimateStiff, and these have been provided by Inner Reflections on this page. So if this is your first time you're getting into AI animation, I recommend you start with my Animate Dev Guide playlist on the channel. Let's get started by running through the guide about Hotshot Excel. To get this working, there are a few installation dependencies we need to follow. First is the new IP Adapter Plus. If you already have this installed, that's fine. If not, please check the link above to guide you on how to do that. The second here is the frame interpolation. We are not going to be needing that for this tutorial. Next below is for us to have the motion modules which uh, we need for Hotshot Excel. You can find the link right here which will take us to Hagen Face. We go under files and versions. There are two motion modules as safe tensor files. So we are going to make use of this one here, which is layers F16 safe tensors. And I'll place this into your directory into Comfy UI as um, I have on my screen. I have renamed mine here to Hotshot Excel for easy recognition. Another motion module that might work well for Hotshot is also available here by Kosinka Ding. I'll provide all the links in the description. This is already renamed and download this as well and place into the same directory. So since we intend to use uh, Animate Diff for Excel generations, we also need to install some Excel checkpoints. So by going to Civit AI, we can download this tested checkpoint which works well, but you guys are also free to experiment with other Excel models. Make sure you have the right version selected for the SD Excel model, then click download. I have already downloaded mine into my directory under models, checkpoints. From here, we also need a VAE since we are working with the SD Excel models. Also come to the page here on Hagen Face and we are going to find a VAE model for the SD Excel. Click to download, place this into your Comfy UI directory under Models VAE folder. So from here, let's move back to the page. I'm going to go for the text to video simple workflow for us to test everything we've downloaded so far. So before starting the Hotshot workflow inside Comfy UI, let's run through the pages of the SD Excel guide as well for any dependencies we might need. So on the page, uh, everything here will be the same except for the motion module for the SD Excel. The SD Excel model for animation is different, so we have to download it from Hagen Face. Once on Hagen Face, we can find the module here as MMSD Excel V10 Beta. Download this as well and place them into your Comfy UI directory as I have here. So to recap everything so far, make sure you have these in place. Hotshot Excel, two motion models, SD Excel, one motion model, and for the SD Excel checkpoint, we have the Fenris Excel. And make sure you have all of this placed in the right directories. Let's go into Config UI. I will use the load tab to locate and load the workflow we just downloaded from the Hotshot Excel page. Zooming on the far left, we have the input group. The first node is the number of frames, which will be the duration of the video. Then uh, we have the frame size nodes, which will be the width and the height of the animation. And we also have two nodes here, which is uh, the load checkpoint and also the VAE checkpoint. Scrolling to the right, you can see we have the positive prompt plus the negative prompt. So since it's an SD Excel workflow, it's using a text and code SD Excel compared to the normal text node, which is normally used. For the width and height, we can see these are all defaults 1024 by 1024, which is the normal resolution for the SD Excel. Scrolling up, we have the Animate Diff group nodes. Inside the Animate Diff loader, we have the model here as Hotshot Excel, which we downloaded earlier. Try either of the two models we downloaded for best results. Secondly, the beta schedule is set to Linear Hotshot Excel. Inside the context option, we can also see the length is set to 8 frames. For now, we have this using the Hotshot settings, and to use the SD Excel, we need to change the model name to SD Excel model we downloaded. Secondly, we change the beta schedule to um, SD Excel as well and also inside the context options we change the length from 8 to 16 frames also down here we change the context overlaps to 4 so this is what makes the difference of using Hotshot Excel or either using the SD Excel module don't be too confused later on we'll be comparing the 
image generation of both workflows to see the results. Uh, moving to the right, we have the case sampler with the usual settings and inputs. We have the output group. We have a preview node for images and the video combined node. Uh, make sure to change the frame rate here to whatever you prefer regarding the animation you are working on. You can change the video format as well from H.264 to whatever you may prefer, but I usually keep mine as H.264. Zooming out here, this is a complete breakdown of the workflow for SDXL using Animative. So to test the first workflow, I have this set to the hotshot model setup, and I have the model as the hotshot model, the beta schedule as hotshot. Also context option is set to 8 frames, which is required for the hotshot setup. For the checkpoint node, select an Excel model. I have my prompt here also as a young woman walking on the street. I have included some negative prompts as well. Let's cue prompt to see the results with the hotshot Excel settings. So to compare this to the SDXL settings, I'm going to duplicate the node to keep this for the hot shot and I'm going to change the color here to red. Let's scroll to the left and let's uh, change this from hot shot to use the SDXL animative settings to compare the results. Change the scheduler, the beta schedule to use the SDXL animative. And with the context option, I'll change this to 16 frames, change the overlap to four for the right settings. From here, I'll keep everything else at default and let's see what we get comparing the SDXL generation to the hotshot generation. I'm going to skip to the results here without wasting too much time. Alright, so comparing both of these together, we can see the changes are not too drastic, which I really like, and the resolutions are both impressive. There's more realism with the hotshot model, but the movement is not too stable and consistent. For the SDXL settings, the clothes and the bag are more consistent, but I think the realism is a bit less. So I guess there are more things we can compare to both of these generations. It comes down to whatever project you are going for and whatever gives you the best results. Results. Also, here are a few more animation prompts I tested with both the Hotshot and the SDXL setup. Both comes with its advantages and disadvantages. Hotshot XL creates its videos from 8 frames long, while SDXL makes its videos 16 frames long. Also, since this is an SDXL animated workflow with Animate Div, this could be VRAM intensive as a word of caution. So your generations might take a bit longer, it might need a little more patience. You guys can still come back onto the page and you can download other workflows here provided by Inner Reflections. There's also a video to video workflow here for both options. So smash the thumbs up if you made it this far and I'm hoping this information was helpful to you guys. To get started with Animate Dev, you can also see the beginners playlist here to develop a strong foundation and I'll see you guys in another video.